Cody Price, and welcome to my workshop. back from the big box store got myself some 3 8 inch off red but that's for another project this time we're gonna be focusing on the router table let's skip the middle and go to the top time to figure out how to mount that cast iron table on top come on inside I'll show you what I got in mind let's build a new router table It's time to build that cast iron top. Well, here we are. <laughs> What's left of the router table. As you'll recall, the router was mounted on an extension wing from the table saw on the jointer side. And it was pretty tight over there. As a matter of fact, if I really had to use a lot of it, I would move the jointer out of the way. And that's okay. There wasn't much room in my last workshop, but I've got room, room here. So we're going to do a dedicated router station. We're going to reuse a lot of these parts. This cast iron top, hard to beat. We're going to reuse that. My last two tables, I used for mica, and those were good, but cast iron's better. This is one of my outriggers, and I need this because this table doesn't have any T-track in there to mount a conventional fence on. So we will use something like this and build this into the table itself. I'm going to try to reuse this if I can. We'll see. We're going to reuse this fence. Once we get the T-track installed, we will reuse the router lift. Makes sense to do so in the router too. We will not reuse the dust box that's going to be built into the table. Finally, I want a place to start storing some of my bits. So we're going to include some storage in the table to store bits and various other items. The anchor jig is another matter. This has got a long arm on the back of it, and that's so we can move it back and forth easily. This is the mechanism by which it rides through and attaches. That's going to have to be out the back. The table ends right here. So there's going to be an outrigger that will come on or be able to be taken off, and we'll address that later in the project. This is the board that I have. Finally, I have a ministry to see that. And I've got two more in the series of the past four years. But I'm happy to be able to do this. So at that point, I think we're about to go. So let's get these dogs and take a look and see what we got.
see the reveal I have here, and I think I'm good with that. Get away from the You've heard me say it before, that factory edge isn't worth having, so I won't have it. We'll start out this process of getting the top cut out by taking the factory edge and putting a clean edge on it. Having rough cut the bottom of the plywood off, I'm going to take it over to the table saw and I'll get those two sides parallel. We'll get out the crosscut sled and we'll put one square edge on one side. Squaring up the other side completes the process. While we're at it, we'll trim out the outriggers. I wanted them a little thinner, so that's what we'll do right here. First one, and then the other. I'm at the assembly table and I've got my plywood base right here and I'm flush up to the sides. That looks real good. When I move this back, my edge right here is right even with the tangent point where we turn around. That's great. And when I line this up, I can take a little bit of that off and my T-track right here will be just fine. And that whole, that'll give a great appearance. But in the back, I have a void. Now that was to avoid some of the 
uh, structural components of the table saw. I did not need to come all the way back flush with this. I did not have a surface that came all the way out to here. So the fact that this stopped right there at the time was no issue. But I'm not wanting to see a void right there and I don't want to see an infill. So my first thought was take this, turn him over, and now I'm very close to this. I can trim that off a little bit and it'll be perfect. I can make my dados right there, but I've got a gap right there that's gonna be highly visible. I've got a couple more back there. And quite frankly, I was hoping for a little bit more. So I am going to take these two pieces right here and probably not go into the burn pit, but they will go somewhere waiting for a new task. I've got another piece of oak right here that's seen a little bit too much weather. So what we'll do is we'll take this guy right here, cut out two blanks, mill them up, and we've got dados to cut and we've got T-track to duplicate. So we've got some work here to make it happen. And uh, first steps are to get to the planer jointer and get ourselves some stock that's milled up to thickness and then we'll start to get it on the dado blades and mill ourselves out a piece. The other thing I'll point out, which is something that I think I'm going to do, whereas this piece is just a touch proud of the edge right there, I think I'm gonna make this a little wider still to give myself a little bit more of a lip. I think that will look good and it may, if I make it large enough and I've got enough stock here, I may actually be able to get a clamp on it for future applications. So. We'll take this problem and turn it into an opportunity. You've heard me say it before, mark your boards. You'll never know if you're done unless you do. Well, look at that. I have marked my boards. I guess I'm learning. While we're here, I want to say something about planers. All planers, unless you've got a really expensive one like Spag, are going to leave a bit of snipe on the end. What you can do is leave your piece a whisper thick and then take it to the joiner for that final dimension. This is the piece I just cut and this is the line that we cut it on. I can tell because I've got a little burn here and I've got marks here. so. I know that this was what was up against the cast iron. And I've taken a little bit of time here and I've got this situated where it will go right through. And my stack dado head cutter is set up for about three quarters of an inch. Now, I don't know the height yet and we will test the height right now. It looks a little bit short. I'll bring this up just a touch. That'll be a little bit there we go. We'll give that a try. Now, I've got my stock right here, and right now I have them marked with fence up and on the fence, so that when we put them together, the grain pattern might match. Now, I'm not building a piece of furniture, but it's here. You might as well use it. The next thing you're ready to do is, is to make a cut, but let's go ahead and make a test cut first, just to make sure. The T-Track is a bit proud, and that's okay. I can make another cut and bring it down a bit. If it had been too deep, I'd have never gotten the wood back, and putting washers underneath it is not my idea of a good fix. I'd much prefer to make two passes and sneak up on it. We're good. We can move on to the oak now. First one. And then the other. Mm -hmm. 
it almost seems a shame to put a piece of cast iron in between them. As it turns out, the first of the two channels cross our are three quarters of an inch as well. So I've got my piece marked, positioned, and tight against the fence. All right, on this one, we use the, uh, the miter gauge to align the pieces and we still clamp it to the fence. Really want this to be perfect. I'll complete the T-slot with a handheld router. It just seems to be the right tool for the job. I'm using my T-track to align my pieces and it looks like it's coming up pretty well. I'm going to take a pencil and mark this end back here. We'll take this over to the compound miter saw and cut these to length. I've got a quarter inch round over bit in my router and I am going to round over the edges. Now, I have a flat piece that's going to be buttoned up against this, so I don't want to come any farther than this on the top one and this on the bottom one. I just don't. So I will stop it right there so I have a flat surface and a square edge to mount up to. Secondly, this one can come all the way over because it's going to be right into the cast iron, but the bottom is going to be on a flat edge, so we'll stop it right there. I've made my marks on this piece right here, so I'm pretty much ready to go. Off camera, I cut out the hole for the dust collection and the mount the router in. I have also taken the time to drill out four holes according to our template and I have mounted this board on top of my cast iron and the fit is good. I'm very happy. It's time now to mount my outriggers. Now I've got a little bit of lanyap on either side here to mount them to and I'm four inches down and one and a quarter inch in and that's where I'm going to put my holes to mount these. I have also placed my T-track in there to make sure that I'm lined out specifically with the T-track in the router table. And finally, I have closed them in with a couple of clamps. I want this fit to be tight. So we're going to go ahead and drill out these holes and mount them. Now remember, with hardwood, always drill out your holes. You could twist off the head of this thing quicker than spit if you're trying to go through quarter sawn white oak without a pre-drilled hole. So make sure you do that. I've marked where I want my holes to be on the plywood, but in order to keep the drill bit centered, I want to go ahead and use this marking tool to put a dent in the plywood. This is a great tool. You gotta get one. I've also put a piece of masking tape on my drill bit. That keeps me from over drilling. You know you're at the right height when the masking tape sweeps the surface clean. One down, three to go. I'm a half inch in from the back on my tracks, which I'm installing now, and I've got to pre-drill the holes for those. So what I'm using, in order to make sure I'm centered, I'm using a Vix bit and that has a tapered end on it with a drill bit in the center and this retracts which allows you to put the hole right in the center where it needs to be. Now, it doesn't get any better than that. So what we do next, we follow up with a 132nd inch bit, which is pretty small, but it is centered. We just go into the same hole, give ourselves a little more depth. And then we follow it up, put it in with a 
the Phillips head bit. That's not going anywhere. Oh yeah, that'll work every time. Well, that about finishes it up for this episode. And it's about where I want it to be. I wanted to get the top finished, and it is. I have taken this cast iron top, we made a template to figure out where all the mounting holes were in the back, which is over there. We chose four, and we've mounted our plate on top. On that plate, we've also mounted our outriggers, which we had to build from scratch. And I think they came out much better than the last ones. Finally, we've got our T-Track installed, and that looks good as well. It's in the right place. So this is coming along nicely. Next episode, we're going to be taking this apart and the top plate is going to integrate into our router cabinet. And that cabinet is going to mount on our roller base that we made last episode. So I hope you'll come and join us and see that because I think you'll find it interesting. Until then, I'll see you next time in the workshop.